The guys that have the ball are the Chicago Bulls, one of the hottest teams in the East currently. The guys wearing blue are the dubs, and in this clip, you can see how easily they shut down the guys wearing red with their suffocating defense. Yesterday afternoon, obviously we discussed some things that shoot around, but it's really hard to change a whole lot. Um, and I think those guys... The dubs are out for blood this season, and they're on a mission to reclaim their throne, courtesy of their suffocating defense, just like what they did to these poor bulls. Today, let's enter the film room and break down some plays on how the Dubs are punishing the entire league using their elite defense, both individually and as a team. Let's start off by dissecting plays showcasing some of the Dubs' defensive highlights at crucial moments. This is the game situation. The Dubs are up by two with a little over 40 seconds left in the game, and they knew, just like everyone else in the arena, that the ball will fall in the hands of their closer, Paul George. Here you can see that Damian Lee is fully aware that PG won't pass the ball to the cutting Terrence Mann at all costs. So that's why he left his defensive assignment to harass PG along the sideline with Draymond. If you thought this was a clickbait video when you put the word suffocating about the defense of the Warriors, well, then you better check this next sequence. Told you, it was really suffocating. Anyway, to cap this one off, Draymond finished this superb defensive sequence by contesting PG's shot attempt. In an almost similar situation, the Warriors had a close game against Detroit, and their late game defense showed up once again to propel them to a win without the help of the main guys. Let's break that one down further as the last possession evolves. As you can see here, the Warriors fielded a versatile defensive unit consisting of GP2, Kaminga, Looney, JTA, and Wiggins. Jeremy Grant went baseline, but Wiggins was there to prevent him from scoring an easy two. Other teams would let him slide, but the Warriors are known to play tough defense and not opting to foul despite being up three. When Grant kicked out the ball to Frank Jackson at the top of the key, there was the six foot eight Kaminga waiting for him, so he had no choice but to swing the ball to Sadiq Bey. The Warriors were fully aware that they needed a three, so when Sadiq drove and kicked out to Grant, there was the outstretched arm of JTA to bother the shot. Jeremy for three. Off Though the Dubs were not able to secure the rebound, GP2 still rushed to the shooter, and when he got faked out, there was the presence of Kaminga yet again to contest and bother the shot. Control by Corey Joseph. Frank Jackson fires top. Ball game. Dubs win. As you evidently saw during this last second scramble by the Dubs, the Warriors are not that tall and hefty at all, but rather, all of them were long and agile, which was the perfect combination to insert, especially when the opposing team is in dire need of a three-pointer, because those five can run and chase someone all over the court, and they're almost switchable to avoid exploiting them in mismatches. Despite lacking the firepower on both ends that they usually have, Steve Kerr spoke about the next man up mentality of the Dubs during the post-game interview of their matchup against the Pistons. To come in here and really get contributions from everybody, it turned what would have been a good, solid road trip into an excellent road trip. Just a fantastic win, and a great job by the guys who were here and active tonight. He also highlighted some of the guys who stepped up to the plate when their numbers were called. I think we've got guys who know how to step up when they need to. Wiggs and Jordan, knowing that they had to score some points for us tonight and be the focal point offensively. They both stepped up and did a great job. I love the play off the bench of Chioza and Bielitsa. Jonathan came in at the very end of the game for defensive purposes and handled himself really well. So a lot of good stuff. The back-to-back -back clips that we've just broken down serve as concrete pieces of evidence that can solidify the Warriors case to bag the ship this season. Because when the game is on the line, you can count on their defense to pull out a victory nine times out of ten. Now, in this next clip, I want to show you how the Warriors are clamping the opposing team's stars using individual defense, starting off with Andrew Two-Way Wiggins. In this clip we got here, you see Wiggins mirror LaMelo, like he's his own shadow and read him like a book all the way through. LaMelo thought he could use his speed against Wiggins to scoop a quick lay-in, but Wiggins in return used his wingspan and body to gobble up LaMelo as the shot clock expired. If that wasn't enough, 
Although this is from last season, here's another clip of Wiggins shutting down the King himself. This is a classic LeBron play where he would just pound inside using sheer force. Simply, and Golden State in the fifth. But Wiggins is no pushover at 197 pounds, and LeBron quickly recognized this, so he went for his patented fadeaway. When that happens, Wiggins used once again his length to cover the separation LeBron made to block his shot. Great defense in the NBA this year. Anyway, let's continue the defensive reels rolling, this time putting the lenses on Draymond Green. What we got here is the game between the Dubs and the Nets some few years back. Andrews is scuffling from deep tonight. Just love how Otto in this play, everyone knows that this is KD's sweet spot, and he's pretty much automatic from here. But Draymond never gave up on the play and challenged KD squarely to bother the shot to force a rare miss. Now, in this ISO situation, Draymond knows the tendencies of his former teammate, and though Draymond got left off in the dust, he was able to influence him to go straight to help defense and forced him to take a tough one-legged floater. Durant's hit a couple. KD came into this game averaging 29.6 per game, but after the buzzer had sounded, KD only finished with 19 and shot only 6 for 19 in the field. He also shot 0 for 8 during the third quarter, and I think this is one of the biggest reasons why the Nets got blown out really badly heading into the fourth. After that game, KD shared some of his insights on how great the Warriors' defense was that night. They got long defenders, guys that can help. So seeing bodies all the time when I had the ball, that's what great defenses do. And then some shots I wish I could have had back. And when a reporter asked Kerr about Draymond's ability to defend, he bragged about his defensive versatility, which other well-known defenders don't possess. Draymond to me is the best defender in the league. I know Simmons and Gobert are excellent. I just think what Draymond does across the board from guarding point guards to guarding centers, the other guys don't do that. They're much more specialized in their roles defensively. Next up, let's check out some of the defensive highlights coming from the young glove, GP2. This is Ish Smith. He stands six feet tall. The reason why I highlighted his height is that shorter guards normally have a better command at the ball compared to taller guys. But check this out. GP2 uses his fast reflexes and the young glove picks his pocket as if he stole candy from a little kid. Which this? They just left here. Easy. And if you're not amazed by that, here's another clip of him guarding James Harden. In this play, GP2 went under the Aldridge screen to keep hounding Harden. In this game, the Warriors bench that big second quarter. With a little bit of help coming from Looney to prevent Harden from attacking the lane, GP2 knew that Harden would pass the ball back to Aldridge for his perimeter J and intercepted the pass exactly as he figured. Harden working with Aldridge and denied. When GP2 was asked about what the difference was between guarding guards compared to wing players, the young glove exudes the same level of confidence just like his dad in answering the media that he can guard anyone regardless of their position. Nothing doesn't matter. One through five, it really doesn't matter. As you can see, here is a Warriors team that is capable of playing solid D down to the 15th man. And even their young bloods like Jonathan Kaminga. Check this play out. At this point, you would think that this is a sure two for the beard with a clear path to the rim like this, but out of nowhere? Man, that felt like... All kidding aside, guys, I just got two words for JK after that weak side rejection. Raw athleticism. Now to cap off the individual defenses shown by the dubs, let's look at some defensive sequences made by the chef. Yeah, you heard it right, the chef grilling other players on defense. In this play, Curry lets Harden go to the right, which is his weak hand, and when the help D shows up, Curry easily pokes the ball out of the Beard's possession. Curry has for him and the confidence he's played this year. Fun to watch. That's and almost the same thing happened here. Sharp leaves it and a swipe down by Curry. Curry, still Curry is currently averaging 1.7 steals a ball game and ranks 11th overall. But as the season goes, it's certainly possible that the number will go up with the way the Warriors are playing defense right now. And we might even see Curry become the king of steals once again if he decides to run it back as if we were in 2016. Now that we've showcased their individual capabilities, let's close this one out by showing their superb defense as a cohesive team. 
The dubs know that Trey Young is a threat from out there, so GP2 and Iguodala doubled him right away. And you can see here that the Warriors kind of formed a 3-2 zone too. When he swung the ball to the corner, JTA was there to cover the corner man, which was Bogdanovic. But as the play unfolds, the Warriors seamlessly shift to a 2-3 zone with GP2 and Steph on top, while the other three guys rack up beneath them. And before the Hawks could even conjure a play, JTA was able to steal the ball and force a turnover against Bogdanovic. If you pluck each warrior and analyze them from a basketball standpoint, you'd quickly discover that the majority of them are ready to pull the trigger anytime and anywhere. And they can guard any type of position because of their innate versatility. Anyway, enough about defense for a bit. Have you ever wondered why the Warriors' offense is so hot? If you have, don't fret, I got you covered right here in this video, where I go over and break down just why the Warriors are so unstoppable on the offensive side of the court. It's a pretty crazy video, guys. Click it, watch it, and like always, I'll see you on the other side.